from my random reading, I would just happen upon very fortuitous phrases when I was looking for a title. It's magic the way that works. Yeah, I can just go to the library or go to my library and pick out a book and just thumb through it and the title will leap off the page sooner or later. The weed that strings the hangman's bag, a red herring without mustard, and yeah. I am a sick of shadows, which is tennis, and a co- of course. And fine and, private uh, place. Yeah, each one of them, in the beginning, the publishers didn't think much of them. They said the, nobody will get it. The titles are way too long, way, way, way too long. But after after the sweetness at the bottom of the pie got on the New York Times bestseller list, everybody said, what great titles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I love the titles you yes. come up with. So I... I've, I've had no further objections about them. In fact, I think they kind of look forward to them a little bit. We do. Good. That's yeah, I have, I have fun with them. The new one, which yeah. is uh, the next one, which is coming out in January next year, is called The Golden Tresses of the Dead. Oh, look forward to that. Yeah, I just received the advanced reading copies uh, a couple of days ago, and it's a very nice-looking book. And that's the tenth one, so yes. you can see that I've been keeping my nose to the grindstone. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you think Flavio would do in today's world with the Internet and all the technology we have today that she didn't have back then? Yeah, I think she'd be plotting to poison all the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I liked her. (laughs) Oh, she's quite a girl. She's quite a girl. I think she would look askance at the world the way it is today, as I do. I could totally agree with her or see her agreeing with me, whichever comes first. But Flavia and I are like the chicken and the egg, so it's hard to tell. But I I think we can safely say that poison would play a part. Oh, of course. Alan, we have a lot of first-time writers that listen to our podcast, and we were wondering if you could talk a bit about when you got your first book published and some of the trials and tribulations that came along with that. Well, as I say, I I think I was 69 when the first book was published, and it took a long time. Someone had told me years before that that it would take 10 years to write a book can get it published, and they were wrong. It took 15. (laughs) I think there are several things that add up to good advice. I I don't claim to be an expert on it, but I can speak about my own experience. And I think the first thing is to write the best book that you possibly can, that you uh, write it and polish and polish and polish and polish until you can polish no more is very important. It also helps to be able to get it to the right person if you can find a way of doing that. But at the same time, I firmly believe that if you write the best possible book that you can, and and it is a good book, I don't think any uh, editor or publishing house would ever turn it down. There are so many manuscripts received that are not good, and of course they can tell from the first page whether it's going to be publishable or not. So you need to um, grab the editor right on the first page with the quality of the writing as much as anything. I know people talk about writing gripping narrative hooks and, you know, have somebody's throat slit in the first two lines, but that isn't important. It's the quality of the writing that I think is uh, absolutely paramount. And then the next thing would be to finish it. More difficult than you can ever imagine to finish a book when you start out writing it, you're full of bubbles and you think it's going to be fun and you don't realize that it might take 10,000 hours to do this and you have to be writing about something that you can stay enthused about for all of that time. You have to don't be beat down by the book. So in other words, you just have to write and write a lot and clean it up. Another thing is to take chances, do things that nobody has ever done before. Editors love that. They don't hate it. They don't want it to be unreadably wild, but, I mean, you can imagine what Joyce's publishers thought when they saw the manuscript of Finnegan's Week. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Ulysses, that, of course, goes on to be an all-time classic. So take chances and uh, have fun with it and write about things not only that you know about, but things that you're very um, interested in so that you can get through the draggy times. But above all, or underneath all, I guess, 
advice is keep your behind in the chair. That's the hard part. Yeah, that's great advice for our writers. One of our members, Kathy, would like to ask you a follow-up question. Okay. Well, it's basically about what you were inspired by or who you were inspired by more accurately. What authors inspired you to write and who you emulate? Oh, my goodness. There are so many. I would have to send you a library from from early years, Mark Twain, from middle years, uh, people who write gloriously like T.H. White. In later years, people who are just off the scale. And Angela Carter, for example, might be surprising, but... There are a lot of books that I love. I I like things about things that I know nothing about so that I can learn about them. I discovered Patrick O'Brien's seafaring novels, which are gorgeously written, based them on Jane Austen. Patrick O'Brien's sailing novels, I had to tear them away from my wife. Uh Uh She was reading ahead of me, and uh, I think there were about 12. Uh, There wound up being about 20 of them in all, and they're absolutely magnificent. As far as historical writing goes, there was another author named George MacDonald Fraser who wrote a series of novels about Flashman, who was an absolute cad that lived uh, (laughs) during the time of the Napoleonic Wars. And his research and his capturing of atmosphere and language is just, I can't describe it. I can only tell you that they are one of two books, and I'll tell you in a minute who wrote the other one, but... Only two books have ever literally made me fall out of bed laughing. Uh, George MacDonald Fraser uh, with Flashman was one, and the other one you have probably guessed is Garrison Keillor. Oh, Oh, okay, yes, yes. Yeah, very, very funny. Highly recommended. Do you have any upcoming events or book signings that you'd like our listeners to know about? I don't write at the moment. As as the years go by and I age, uh, inevitably, we're getting up there and travel is not as easy as it was even 10 years ago. It's so much more difficult and stressful to travel that I have turned down a lot of requests to go to literary events or book signings. Uh, simply because it's just too difficult to do nowadays. So I I tend not to do them. I'm focusing more on doing things like communicating by Skype with libraries, which I am happy to do, or to do interviews as as we're doing, or just chatting as we're doing now, and and get away from the big-time book touring. I did a huge amount of touring with the Flavia books. I was... As Hank Snow used to say in his song, I've been everywhere, man. I was in <laughs> Croatia, Finland, Germany, you name it, Malta. I've been at Oxford to talk about the Flavia books, which I think oh, is the wow. ultimate. Yes. At the moment, I'm laying low, let's say. <laughs> now, can I ask you a off the wall question? Sure. Do you have any plans or is it feasible that someday you'll write a book about Dogger and his adventures before he came to live at Buckshaw? Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. There you Uh, go. Yeah, because we're very intrigued by Dogger. Yes. Yes. Well, you're going to love the new book. Oh, Oh, good. Good. Absolutely going to love the new book when it comes out and Dogger. I don't think I would be giving away any secrets because I think the the thumbnail sketch of the book is on some of the websites on the internet and you'll be interested to hear in in the doings of a little firm that has been founded called Arthur Dogger and Associates (laughs) Discreet (laughs) Investigations. Very interesting. They're already... um, at it hard. That's wonderful. Well, Alan, we cannot thank you enough for doing this, and we wish you luck with the future of Flavia and any other projects you have. And we'll be looking for the next Flavia. Thank you. I'm honored to be in Agatha's footsteps. I'll just have to watch and make sure that I don't step in any poison. Oh, definitely. Ah, Thank you again so much. You're very welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed that episode as much as we did. And stay tuned for new episodes. 
beginning next week. We have some great stuff planned for the upcoming year. You'll be getting our newsletter very soon, and we have a great segment in there where we've reached out to some of our authors, and they have let you know what their New Year's resolutions are, and our New Year's resolutions will also be included. So definitely check that out. For everyone, a very, very happy happy New Year! year! 